Hello and welcome to this revision video. Remember you'll find this and all of the other lecture slides on FROG along with all of the past paper questions and all of the quotations that you'll need to prepare for your exam. Now this is religion and equality. As I said, all I'm going to do is just talk through and hopefully amplify some of the points within this section. You can see here the specification first of all splits into five different sections. So first of all, of course, it is religion and equality. So we'll focus on, firstly, the principle of equality and some biblical teachings about it in general. And then it splits into different sections. So we're talking about racism, both views and practices, attitudes towards gender, which is a very current topic, particularly the role of women in the Christian church and in Christian society, both historically and in modern times. We're also going to look at attitudes to religion. So that includes things like uh, Islamophobia, of course, but also missionary work, evangelism and ecumenism. Finally, we're going to look at forgiveness and reconciliation. So that's beliefs about forgiveness, impacts of beliefs about forgiveness on believers, and also beliefs and impacts of reconciliation. Okay, so first of all, we should all know these definitions already. So prejudice is to prejudge without sufficient reason. To have an opinion, no fact, no sufficient reason. There can never be a sufficient reason to prejudge an entire group with just a stereotypical characteristic. Discrimination, then, is treating somebody differently. So it's acting on prejudice. The idea of discrimination is acting on prejudice. So prejudice leads to discrimination. These two could come up as part A questions in your GCSE paper. You might get asked to give some examples of prejudice. Now I would always encourage you to, the night before the exam, look up some news stories from the BBC website to see if you can add some of those because that shows the examiner that you are integrating your studies into everyday life. The areas that you might, you might get asked about are ageism, of course that's prejudice and discrimination against those in terms of their age, both uh, elderly and also adolescents and teenager, sexism, racism, homophobia, xenophobia, that's fear of a group or nation, religious prejudice and prejudice against disabled people. Now some examples there I've given, uh, Age UK fight ageism, so you may want to bring those in as an example of fighting ageism. Uh, sexism, there is still a gender pay gap. Uh, there is an equal pay act, so a man cannot get paid the se uh, a different wage as a woman for the same job. Nevertheless, women's wages on average are lower for both full-time and for part-time work. I've given an example of racism here. There's lots and lots of riots going on in the US at the moment, particularly in Baltimore, all to do with police treatment of uh, black suspects. And uh, the prison system in the US has a, a hugely significant proportion of prisoners of uh, African-American uh, ethnic uh, ethnicity. Homophobia finds an integrated place in our society in terms of homophobic language. Even the use of the term gay as a derogatory term, even in a light-hearted sense, is evidence of institutionalised homophobia and is an example of prejudice. Xenophobia is basing negative stereotypes around, for example, attitudes to foreigners. And religious prejudice can be seen in something like the response to 9-11, which saw attacks on Muslims and indeed on Sikhs increasing heavily in America due to fear of the other. This also has happened post the recent Charlie Hebdo attacks, both on uh, Jewish people and also Muslims. And finally, prejudice against disabled people. Now, this has been combated hugely since the two 2012 Paralympic Games, which has really brought to the forefront the uh, issue of um, 
disabled people's rights. Obviously the exam is about religion and equality, but it is worth noting that global equality uh, exists and is chartered in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Two articles. One says all human beings are born free and equal in dignity. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration without distinction of any kind such as race, colour, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth or other status. So basically everyone is equal and that is enshrined in global guidance. And charter. Okay, you should have your quote sheet in your notes. If you don't, you'll also find that on Frog. There are some key biblical teachings on equality in general that can also be applied to specific areas of equality, prejudice, and discrimination if you get asked about those. Love your neighbor as yourself. Yes, please don't overuse this. This is a very, very good quote to be deployed, but don't use it three times in your 12 marker, twice in your 6 marker, and once in your uh, part A, because uh, it shows that you perhaps don't have enough in-depth knowledge of quotation. Yes, very good, but it needs to directly answer the question, and please don't overuse it. A good quote from uh, Galatians is, There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Fairly self-explanatory, as is all made in the image of God, or man made in the image of God. Basically meaning that we are all equal. Nobody gets to the Father except through me, said by Jesus, found in the New Testament book of John. Uh, and also make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have told you. So there's no uh, nation uh, or creed or colour exclusivity related to these quotes are all pro-equality. So you can talk about Christian attitudes to racism. It's very unlikely that you will get a 12 marker that will ask you to give a balanced view on Christian attitudes to racism. Reason being is that the vast, vast majority uh, of Christians believe in uh, both racial uh, and religious equality for all. Examples and support for this can be found in a very, very famous story of the Good Samaritan. Uh, Samaria was a rival nation uh, seen as um, the enemy to the Jewish people. Yet when a man was lying on the floor and a rabbi had passed by the other side of the road to avoid helping him the good samaritan came along and helped the man and it's a parable suggesting that uh, racial or, or, or national barriers can be broken down and all people can be charitable helpful and equal william wilberforce as well a slightly more modern example of a christian acting on their belief in, in terms of fighting inequality, campaigned successfully to end the slave trade. We also have examples of Martin Luther King, of course a Christian pastor, which has arguably led to uh, the first black president in Barack Obama. On the flip side, the apartheid regime in South Africa was supported by the Dutch Reformed Church, but that is a very isolated example. As I have mentioned, when you're talking about Jesus and discrimination, you can reference the Good Samaritan. Also the uh, centurion's servant miracle. So the servant is basically saying that uh, uh, there is no superiority, there's no class system because even a servant can be healed. The adulterous woman. So let he who is without sin cast the first stone, where Jesus saved the prostitute from being stoned to death by saying we're all sinners really. And that's an example of Jesus against gender inequality. And actually the adulterous woman was Mary Magdalene, who is a central figure in the history of Jesus. 
The healing of the ten lepers, this can be used in terms of disability discrimination, but also Jesus seeing people as equal. And Jesus' choice of followers were not educated men. They were not scholars. They were not Sadducees, Pharisees or rabbis. They were fishermen, carpenters. They were everyday folk. Another example of Jesus in discrimination is uh, the inspiration given by him to Mother Teresa, who was inspired to follow Jesus' example in her entire life by giving everything she had to the poor and following God. There are two sides to the coin when it comes to men and women in Christianity. The first side is to argue that whilst men and women are equal in spirit, they have different roles within the church. Uh, and a few examples, as you can read here in your own time. I would mention uh, the last two points. The Roman Catholic and the Orthodox churches do not allow women to become priests. Obviously, uh, popes as well, therefore. The Church of England uh, does allow female vicars and bishops since 1974 and 2014. So I would mention this when talking about the progress of the church in terms of gender-based equality. But it is different. It is changing, but it is different. On the flip side of that, there's a lot of men and women being completely equal in the church, and also some evidence of this. Of course, all of the disciples were believed to be men. However, the first person to see Jesus alive after his resurrection was Mary Magdalene. Now, that was not insignificant. Also, another point that could be talked about is that the most significant people in the Bible, apart from the disciples, are arguably Mary and Mary Magdalene. Mary, of course, the mother of Jesus, and held up as almost godly by the Roman Catholic Church. And the final quote is very powerful down the bottom. In Christ's family, there can be no division into Jew and non-Jew, slave and free, male and female. Among us, you are all equal. We move on now to the section about uh, religion and prejudice. And actually, should you spread the word between all people or should you keep your faith to yourself? First of all, you've got uh, the flip side, uh, one side which you've got evangelism and proselytizing. Evangelism is telling others about your faith. You are evangelizing. Uh, it could also be termed Pentecostal. Pentecostal comes from the uh, word Pentecost, where the disciples were forlorn and lost without Jesus, but then a flame licked above their heads and they became filled with the Holy Spirit, could speak in tongues and went across the globe to spread the word of Jesus. Now, traditionally, Christianity, by its very nature, had to grow through evangelism, because otherwise it would have died out as a sub section of small subgroup of Jewish people but it's spread throughout the world through the teachings and letters of St Paul and through proselytizing and evangelizing and it says I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me there's been a sharp rise in evangelism across the globe particularly in the China and the Chinese subcontinent and sub-Saharan Africa also Ecumenism then is accepting different faiths and working together in harmony with each other. So evangelism is putting forward and convincing others of your faith and trying to convert them. Uh, whereas ecumenism is accepting different faiths and working in harmony with them. An example of which, which I'll talk about in a bit more detail in a moment, is the Taze community. Uh, it's an example of different Christian denominations working together. Um, and it promotes harmony among different people of different beliefs. So a quote from the Taze community is, God is united to every human being, even those who are unaware of it. This lies in stark contrast to the Westboro Baptist Church. Now, I'd like to emphasise before I even mention the quote below, that this is a group of only about 200 people that have become globally famous through their uh, tactics of aggressively marketing through picketing at dead soldiers' funerals. So please don't mention them 
as anything other than a fanatical small group of extremist fundamentalist Christians. And they say things like, God is certainly love towards his elect, but he is certainly not, uh, certainly is not love towards children of the devil. Um, and he and they also said, and they have signs that say things like God hates fags. So they were anti-gay, they are anti-equality, uh, but believe they're preaching the word of the Lord. In terms of spreading one's faith, it doesn't necessarily have to be to do with conversion. It could be spreading faith in action. And an example of this is missionary work, where a person who devotes their faith and their life to teaching others about their own faith, not necessarily trying to convert them, but teaching them, sharing with them, believing that there should, no, there should be no barriers, that everyone should be welcomed into the arms of Christ. And it says at the bottom there, of course, uh, uh, below some examples of famous missionaries, uh, make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have told you. And this comes back to the Pentecost story. The final section, of course, as seen in the specification, is forgiveness. This fits into the religion and equality unit because we all have to, in terms of a, a Christian belief, forgive, forget and see everyone as equal. So reconciliation is a definition you might get in a part A question. The restoration of friendly relations, repairing the relationship, reconcile. There are some examples of this forgiveness in Christianity. Very, very difficult concept for a lot of people to get their heads around absolute unconditional love and forgiveness. An example, a very extreme, extreme example of this is uh, about 15 years ago, a daughter of a vicar living in the vicarage uh, was gang raped by a group of burglars. And they were convicted of rape, sent to prison, and she went to prison to see them and forgave them. I am not to judge you, I forgive you, God will judge you, is what she said. Forgiveness can also be seen in the aforementioned woman caught in adultery story, as well as uh, a few other areas as well. We can see things like um, forgive us our sins and we forgive those who sin against us. That's from the Lord's Prayer. And then this very, very famous quote here, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Pray for those who persecute you. And love your enemies, not just tolerate them, but love them. And that is the concept of absolute forgiveness in Christianity. And it's worth emphasising with examples that Christians forgive everyone in all circumstances, no matter what. Or at least that's the teaching for a lot of Christians. In the 12 mark, you do have a section to talk about other teachings and other beliefs as well. I encourage you, as I said, to use contemporary examples from the BBC website or similar. Google it before the exam, particularly uh, with religion and equality and other units such as peace and justice, wealth and poverty and medical ethics too. Uh, some examples to bring in here, uh, you could talk about the British Humanist Association, which fights for uh, women's rights, gay rights and a number of other rights. It's all about compassion and equality, we're all humans together, and in fact the chairman of the BHA, uh, Andrew Copson, is gay himself. On the flip side, Orthodox Judaism, um, in the synagogue, women uh, are placed uh, on the balcony, behind the men, uh, and men are uh, the worship group together, so perhaps you could say that they are different but equal, or you could argue that that is a sign of inequality. In Sikhism, a fundamental, uh, fundamental building block axiom, if you like, of Sikhism is the Langar. Guru Nanak sat between Hindus and Muslims in the Punjabi re uh, region and men, women sat on the floor, ate together, Hindus, Muslims. And this still takes place in Gurdwaras today where anyone is, is invited to eat Langar in a Gurdwara, Sikhs, non-Sikhs, anyone at all. Hinduism, they have a traditional caste system, but this was 
challenged by Gandhi, very famously, um, who said, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind, and he called untouchables Harijan, or children of God, and he fought for equality his entire life. These are then some simple examples to use when talking about equality in a 12 marker. So, to recap, the principle of equality and biblical teaching about equality, attitudes towards racism, which includes different views, key, different views about equality in relation to race and practices in relation to racism. And then attitudes towards gender, that's different views about prejudice and equality in relation to gender, uh, as well as different roles within the church. Attitudes to religion, and that's attitudes towards other religions in terms of ecumenism, evangelism and missionary work. And then finally, forgiveness and reconciliation. That's beliefs about forgiveness and impacts of beliefs about forgiveness on believers. And the same with reconciliation. I hope you found this video helpful. And I hope that you are now able to go away and practice some parties, some partays, some practice papers, learn some quotes. Uh, it is all on Frog and you can look at some contemporary news examples at the departmental Twitter page, hws underscore rs. Thanks very much.